been looking into the future of medicine where the unbelievable is becoming remotely possible. And cheap death thawed and reanimated in the Our distant future. Our goal is to have reversible suspended animation, just like in the, the movies. they have cured. When I die, I plan to freeze my body in Detroit, in liquid nitrogen, where I will join my husband, Helmer, who already is frozen. Then we can reunite and fall in love again. For 30 years, Marta's been without her late husband, Helmer, who passed away in 1994 and was cryopreserved in the US. I still love him. That's one of the things which keeps me going. It hasn't stopped me from living my life. It's just that I never met anyone I loved like I did Helmer. We were so perfect together. After years of contemplation, she's decided to have her body cryopreserved. I don't know whether it works until it works, but if I'm already dead, how much worse can it get? So what do I have to lose? The idea behind cryonics is that the body is preserved for potential future revival. Once a person dies, blood is flushed out and replaced with a medical grade antifreeze. It has to happen within hours of the person dying to avoid deterioration. The body is then cooled to minus 196 degrees Celsius and lowered head first into a giant three meter vat filled with liquid nitrogen. The first person to be cryopreserved was in 1967. There are currently only about 600 cryogenically frozen bodies in the world. I started getting actively interested in cryonics in the, in the late 90s. Phil Rhodes opened the Neural Archives Foundation in 2008, which freezes and stores brains instead of whole bodies. So far, they've collected brains from 13 humans and four dogs. We think every brain is worth preserving. Every single individual is a perfectly unique uh, time capsule of information. The goal is to keep the brains frozen until technology has advanced sufficiently to reanimate the tissue, which can either be placed in an artificial body or uploaded into a virtual reality, provided those things exist someday. The crew discovers frozen survivors from the 20th century. People, I think, when you talk about this stuff, they're expecting something out of science fiction. Big cylinders with glass face plates where they can go and look at people. This is basically just a new facility, a barn of a place in Holbrook. There are already 34 members who've shelled out fifty dollars to $70,000 to invest in the facility. It only cost me $28,000. I could have gone on a cruise. I preferred to have another chance at life. Right, well, my name is Tony Curlemans, age 94. I might be their first patient. <laughs> Tony's one of those founding members and has been closely involved in the cryonics movement since the 70s. A lot of people say I wouldn't like to come back into the world again after death. I'm just fascinated with the future. A fascination his wife doesn't quite share. So she wouldn't be chronically <laughs> frozen, but both my sons, I think, would be. But many scientists believe that the people frozen using current cryonics couldn't possibly be brought back to life, and that the technologies needed to reanimate a human are still centuries off. I'm reasonably confident about developments in the science that what we thought might not be possible years ago looks increasingly possible now. Nothing in cryonics is guaranteed. But for these early adopters, hope is enough. People can't really see that it's going to work. But once they see that frozen mouse thawed out and running around, there'll be a lot more interest in it, I think. And that, that'll happen eventually. This gives you a, a chance. It may be very, very small, but even if it's only 1%, that's better than zero. Maybe 50%, maybe more. It depends on it. so many different variables. But coming back in a new 20-year-old body, God, that is something I'm looking forward to. Wow. Oh, did they put your old frozen head on a new body? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no, it's because, not clear because they also said virtual reality. It could be, I, I, I don't know. Oh, so they unfreeze you into like an avatar in the well, metaverse. No, there's all these it, but it's, it's, it's just your just... head, isn't it? No. no it's just, you're thinking, like, you're this thinking is not how Austin Powers it? went, <laughs> you know. Can I just be clear? The, 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 this, is yeah. not, this is not a product that currently exists. No. But the Which I, bit? All of it. All the questions you're asking. <laughs> None of this may well, ever happen. Kate was it? about to pop herself in the <laughs> freezer. <laughs> the because we're all excited about the prospect. I, know, of... I think it's about the decision. Like, would you make a decision oh. to take that tiny chance? No. All right, well, there we go. No, <laughs> even though, you know, I get in the cryo chamber every Saturday morning. Oh, really? Oh. Minus 140 degrees for three minutes. That's enough. So what now you only need what? to do, what, like 300 mm. years more of that? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And then you live forever. That sounds easy. That's right. But I just don't understand the... 
uh, any of it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also being unthawed, well, thawed out later yeah. on, and not having your friends and your family around and having and also, to use, like, new operating systems yeah, totally. on your iPhone. Just you know? everything. Like, it's too much. And, and also, that, that lady who was oh, talking about so Helmet, a lovely love story, mm. but... How long's he been passed away? And yeah. so he, he was frozen when he was like... 94, yeah. No, no, the young guy, the young German guy. No, no, in She's... 1994, yeah, yeah. Oh, in 1994. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he, when she's going to get frozen... I, it's just not going to work. Guys, okay, guys, should we make a pact and we'll do it together? Oh, no, yes. I'm tired now. now. Oh, me and Langbrook are in if there. We had, if we had company... <laughs> you yeah, turned around quickly. 